Chipper Jones knows that flirting with 400 is a term that isn't heard much these days. It hasn't happened since Ted Williams hit 406 in his legendary 1941 season. With so much pressure from teammates, fans, and the media, he tries to keep it off his mind. I try and immerse myself in the game, go out and compete, lose yourself in the game, and don't worry about individual statistics. We go out and compete against the other team and try to win the ball game and see where you stand at the end of the game. His highest full season batting average is 337 in his 14th season with the Atlanta Braves. Deep right field, there it goes. Chipper currently stands at 369, and the 36 year old third baseman is still going strong. But that's no guarantee that he's on his way to the milestone. Surpassing the magical mark is so rare that only seven players have accomplished it in the past century. And for a switch hitter, batting 400 has never happened in the history of Major League Baseball. If he does enough harm, we may see a 400 season for the first time in 67 years. Keep your eye on the ball all the time. When you're taking your nice normal swing, you're always right there. Your head stays right there. Your eyes are on that ball all the time. And follow through. Where's your uniform? I understand you got a uniform well, here. Just, just wore the top of it. Well, yeah, that's the Reds uniform. John well, Maggio was amazing grace on the ball field. I never saw anybody, never have since, play as he did. Hit, feel, catch, do everything, make it look easy. With such poetry and grace, I think I could see in him, even as a young child, that personification of excellence. The great records of the early days, Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak in 1941 and Rogers Hornsby's 424 batting average in 1924 are not being equal today. Where have all the great ones gone? Under the platonic view of the world, you look at variable systems like human beings who come in all sizes, races, sexes, colors, shapes, ages, and you try and get a single measure of the ideal human or the extremely valued trait, and then you trace that through time. So you say that human brain size increases through time. What Darwin told us is that's wrong. There is no single number. There's no ideal. There's no abstraction. There's only the variation itself. And it's the variation itself that constitutes the ultimate reality. That's the spread of excellence. And if we analyze the full variation, then we'll see that bacteria dominate. If we study the full variation, we'll see that 400 hitting has disappeared in baseball because the variation has shrunk, not right. because hitting's gotten worse. Okay, well, let's explain. Slow down and let's explain that better. Uh, Ted Williams in 1941. Right, here are my... 400. 406. 406. Uh, and we have not had a 400 hitter since then. But baseball players in general have gotten better, stronger, better. Oh, that's the paradox, Charlie, because between 1900 and 1930, 400 averages were achieved by seven different players in nine of those years. So it was pretty common and hasn't been done for 55 years. So most people assume that has to mean that hitting has gotten worse in some sense, which doesn't make sense for exactly the reason you said. Everything in sports gets better. People are bigger, stronger, better trained. There are more of us. Better. Men of all races can play right. now. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. But we're stuck in our old platonic habits. You see, we think 400 hitting is a thing, a thing measuring excellence, and that it went away, and therefore hitting has to have gotten worse. And we try and invent some reason. Too many night games. They aren't as tough as they used to be, like Ty Cobb. Or Ted, Wil or Ted Williams hard. was a Mozart of our time. Yeah, right. I, yeah. No, Ted Williams himself actually believes those <laughs> notions. But it doesn't make any sense. You have to reconceptualize the whole issue. 400 hitting is not a thing. It's simply the extreme value in a range of variation of batting averages. There are several hundred major league players. Each one compiles a batting average each year. You can make a frequency distribution or bell curve as it's called of those batting averages. And when you do that, it's very interesting. The average batting average has never changed in the history of baseball. 206. It's always been around 260. It varies a little bit, but then they change the rules to bring it back. Now, but a batting average isn't like running a mile or throwing a discus. It's not an absolute measure. It's a balance. It's a balance between hitting and pitching or hitting and other aspects of the game. So the fact that it's stayed 260 doesn't mean that absolute quality of play is the same. I think what it means is that hitting and pitching have gotten better together. The balance has been maintained, so the average batting average is still 260. Now, all that's happened, as everyone's gotten better, the variation has shrunk. I don't think that 
there were giants in the earth in those days and people don't try hard now. I think the great players of today are as good as they were then. But baseball has become so automatic, so regular, so beautifully coordinated a system. The advantage that great players could take of a looser and less well-organized and less regulated system have disappeared. The extremes move in towards the average. History of life has proceeded in much the same way. If you look back 500 million years ago, in the early history of invertebrates, there was an enormous range of designs which we see no longer on the earth. Designs that we don't even know how to relate to any existing group. If there's any pattern in the history of life, it's not progressive advancement of complexity. It's rather the restriction of these enormously varied designs that existed early in the history of life to a few highly successful forms. I would think of it this way. There will always be a few people who are right near the limit of what a human body can do. They're just about as good as a body can get. And Ty Cobb was there in 1910. Tony Gwynn is there today. Wade Boggs was a few years ago. But in 1910, the average level of play was so much worse than that maximal extreme performance that Ty Cobb's performance could be measured as 420. Today, Tony Gwynn is as good as Cobb, maybe a little better for all I know. The average level of play is so much better that uh, Gwynn doesn't stand as far above this much improved average, and therefore it's the shrinking of the variation. The average is still measured as 260 because it's a balance between... Okay, but I still don't understand why nobody's hit 400. Oh, it will happen someday. I mean, Tony Gwynn was 392 right. and rising. And right. Ted Williams hit 388 the year he turned 39 years old. Yeah. Five more hits and he would have had 400. So it will happen again, but it will never happen with the same frequency because there's so much less variation around this preserved constant batting average of 260. Okay, as I still don't understand that. You've got to help me understand that because I'm, I'm, I'm slow. Because there's still so much more grouping around the, var the variation shrinking, there's so much more grouping, and the, the, the level is better and the performance is better. Why would that prevent more people not just being on the right side of the curve? Why, 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 is it to, why would that limit the number of 400 hitters? I put it this way. I mean, I don't understand let's, statistics, let's, obviously. Yeah, no, this is not even a statistical argument. Let's suppose this is a... I'll call it the right wall of limits based right. on human bodies. Right. You know, we're never going to hit a ball a mile or pitch one 200 miles an hour. Let's right. assume that there's always right. some extraordinary human beings who, by dint of great genetic gift or uh, obsessive uh, commitment and training, they're sitting right next to this wall of right. human limits. And uh, this is a line representing how good you are. Now, in 1910, the average player was way down here. He wasn't very good. He was batting 260 mm -hmm. because the pitching wasn't very good and the batting wasn't good. Right. Ty Cobb's standing right here. He's right next to the wall. He can't right. get any better. He's so far away from this 260 average that his performance is measured as 420. He can get a lot of hits. Now, today, the av as everybody has gotten better, the average level of play has moved right up here. Yeah. Still called 260 because of the balance between hitting and pitching. Tony Gwynn standing right here where Cobb was but he's not as far away from the average anymore. There's just much less spread, much less variation around this average 260 performance. It's as though you took the greatest symphony orchestras in the world and just took the violinists out of the greatest symphony orchestras and compiled their range of variation. The best one wouldn't be that much better than the average, but if you then take a sample at random of high school violin players throughout the country and you got the very best one, he'd be up here, but the average might be way down here. So the best high school violin player in the country would be better than the, the average of any music class. But So I think it's that phenomenon. Full House, Stephen Jay Gould, The Spread of Excellence from Plato Darwin, uh, author, as many of you know, of Dinosaur in a Haystack. And some, let me count them, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 books. This is his 15th, Full House. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. It's Joe. always great to see you. Always happy to be here. We'll be right back. Stay with us.